G'day gamers and welcome back to Nucleares, episode 1, season 3, let's get going. New update has dropped iodine in the reactor that will be updated. It is absolutely fantastic and I'll explain what it is, what it does and more that has been in the past couple weeks in their updates. Like we got a bigger blast door, chemicals are installed, has been updated, all that sorts of stuff, weather consequences. RNG failures, all that sorts of stuff and more. Let's get the season going. I'm super keen for this one to try and explain as simply as I possibly can what the new iodine or iodine, whatever you want to call it, does in your reactor as well as the xenon. So I'm going to try and get everything going as fast as I possibly can and then try and explain that as simply as I possibly can as if you should be familiar with the channel and what I'm doing here in the background. So we should just get all of that going. That should be good. That one there, we'll get this on about five and we'll start that pump there. Let's go over here. Let's get the boric acid in. Nice and quick at the highest point it can go and watch that go up. Excellent. Let's request to start operations so we don't forget about doing that. That's already done. We can close that on down and turn that off to say, yeah, Sharpie, you've done that already. Cool. Now, let's get the pressurized reactor on or the pressurizer on as it is a PWR. And in saying that very simply, as you increase your reactivity and your temperature in your reactor now with chemicals, you will have a 0.3% chance to produce the xenon, which is a neutron poison, AKA bad for your reactor. At the same time as that's being created, you've got a 6.3% chance to create the iodine. So that's also somewhat helping you create temperature. And that is, oh, it's, it's better than xenon at least. So iodine is good. Xenon 135 is bad. And I say that number specifically because at the same time, half-life means whatever you've created over that period of time of generating temperature, reactivity, all that sorts of stuff, different equations depending on the time factor, energy factor, all that sorts of stuff. But to simplify it in game, not realistic, it is simplified as iodine once it's been created after six hours half of what's been created will then turn into xenon-135, which is that neutron poison. So at the same time, that xenon that has been created at the same time as that iodine from the very start will break down and has a half-life of nine hours and that'll turn into cesium, which is perfectly fine and that's good. It's not reactive, it's not a poison, it's completely neutral and does not do anything according to the game. Now, what that also does in the background is that it's doing a lot of different things depending on what your reactor is in its current state, which I'm gonna show you in all that sorts of stuff and more. And we've got this all updated. The boron or the boric acid is being inserted and this will update and color in those little dots as it does increase in value of really enjoying this little feature. This is my third playthrough of this one. If you are curious and you want to see my learning and all that sorts of stuff, ask me in the comments below to upload my very first impression and startup with all of these sorts of reactors in like it was just earlier today. So once we've got all that going, let's get, get going. Let's make sure all of this is on condenser off that can fill up as much as it wants. Condenser's nice and full, that's nice and full. The boric acid is going and we should be good to actually start bringing up the reactor. So I'm gonna start that at 90 instead of like a 95 you would normally put it at when you wouldn't have chemicals installed. I need to decrease and increase the reactivity a little bit more than you normally would since we do have the chemicals and the xenon and the iodine and all that being present. So right now, we've got that 6.3% chance, a lot more, like 20 times more than the xenon being produced right now because we're increasing it so much that it's going to become critical at 55 degrees and we'll see it like kind of click and a blue flash with like a screen shaking in just a second. There we go, I think I was right on time just there. Awesome, so we'll bring that temperature up and what we're waiting for now is all of this to be transferred at 49% 
over to our steam generator. So this should get to about 100 degrees, and then I'll start fighting it. Let me just start setting that up nice and quick now. Let's go to 40, I think might be good. As soon as this hits 100 degrees, it'll actually start boiling the water on the inside of that generator. It's on like a, a closed loop. There it goes. Let's just turn loop three, our only available loop on right there to start fighting that drop. So we want to increase the water being put into the loop to fight the water being boiled off so we can keep going through and start generating power and all that sorts of stuff. Let's go into here. We confirm 10 o'clock is when they are ready for that power. I'm going to go T. I'm going to hold the Alt button, which is a new dynamic mode. Absolutely fantastic. And the H, just to get rid of all that stuff off the top left of our screen. So we've got up to the pressure. We don't need to worry about that. That's now an automated process, even though it wasn't when the game first came out. AO would all do all sorts of stuff. So it was really interesting how that kind of worked. There we go. There we have an alarm saying we are now generating power. I need to open the bypass valve to about 25% just to start it off. So we're not putting all the steam we're producing in our generator through the turbine all at once because our resistor, which we have on, has a capacity of 5,000. Above that, it will blow the resistor up and that's not good. That's going to help us generate a nice even service compliance estimate here in the future. So we've got that updatable thing that's very reactive. The absorption is where the control rods would be. Obviously, the boron would be the boric acid. And obviously, the xenon and the iodine or iodine would be these ones just here. So as it goes up, it should come back down a bit, as well as the xenon as well itself. So we want about 360 degrees as our optimum temperature. Let's come on over here and let's make sure that we're not overdoing it. And we are kind of catching up ever so slightly so yep that's getting there ever so slightly that's good 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 we need to get the synchroscope out and what this is is that it's going to synchronize aka level out the waves of electricity that our generator is producing compared to what the city's power is already at at that time hopefully that makes sense so those waves don't kind of bash against each other and do damage to either the city's grid or my turbine itself in that time. So while we're creating power, instead of outputting to the grid because our breaker is closed by that light being red, all that power needs to go somewhere, otherwise it'll internalize it and blow up your turbine itself. That's not good. So all that power we're creating now is actually going over to our resistors in the meantime. So we might want to slow this down just a little bit. I'm going to turn that up to 27, aka my favorite number. I don't know why. Do not ask me. It just is. 291. That's going up slightly. And our boric acid is still being dumped into the actual core itself, which is absolutely fantastic because we do have room for it to be placed in there. And that'll go up per minute. And that'll actually kind of be represented on this gauge that will go up per minute as well. So I'll get into like the ion cleaning and how to fix all that sorts of stuff in the future. But let's see if we can get a nice stable power output to the grid without blowing anything up in the process. So 312, 313. Let's see if we can get this to slow it down just a little bit by increasing the rods into the core a little bit more. So it kills that reactivity a little bit. Just until our boric acid kind of catches up. So we're nearly at, we're at 9.54. These numbers here will not match up until the time the city has actually given you that they want the power. So make sure you haven't forgotten to request that if you are kind of following along in your own sort of game. We are leveling out at that. Let's go check this one over here. 17.60, yep, we need to start fighting this a little bit more. Let's just bring it up by five liters a second. This one will be coming up a little bit more. That's good. The hotter this is, the less this has to work. Just remember that, but if it goes above 100 degrees, then you'll have a three mile island sort of situation as you'll be boiling off all that water level in your condenser. That's not a good thing, remember. Come on over here. That's still raising up a little bit more than what I usually like to. So let's get that to 95. Cool. How are we going on all that sorts of stuff? 49. We're just kind of managing what we're producing so we can still bring this synchroscope number up to get it where we need to and it should yep perfect i caught it 
right on time for it to show up. So what we need to do is we just need to probably speed up our um, turbine just a little bit. And I'm going to hold Alt to do this. So I'm going to raise the RPM by another seven more clicks. It used to be a lot easier than this, but unfortunately it doesn't kind of zoom in as easy as it does anymore. I'm sure it'll get fixed in the future. And we'll get that to about 360. That should be A-OK -okay there. And you can see 22,005 out of 22,000, 51, 51. I'm more than happy to be closing that breaker, turning that light on like that, as we will now be outputting power to the grid represented right there. We're now delivering 32.30, so we now need to stop bypassing the steam we're creating and dump it all through the turbine because we want to create as much power as we possibly can of where we are currently sitting at. So the reactivity has dropped a little bit because our boric acid is starting to catch up a bit. So now we need to start dropping this down a little bit more to let this catch up. So what I might do, let me know in the comments if I should go along with my previous seasons and go with the boric acid concentration only, which will create more corrosion in the system, like valves getting stuck or whatever it may be, which I think may be the better option. Or should I go the typical realistic, inverted commas, method where it is a mixture of the boric acid and the control rods retrospectively so just let me know i'm kind of curious to see what you'd be wanting to see in the comments below we are delivering exactly what they are demanding and we are getting 92.9 percent compliance already absolutely fantastic so what we're waiting for now since we started the reactivity or the reaction at about 9.30. Let's just go about, about 9.30 to make it somewhat simple-ish. In six hours, half of that iodine is going to be turned into xenon-135, that neutron poison. At the same time, from now, in nine hours, half of that small amount of xenon that was created at the start is going to be turned into that blank cesium that's okay, they could just sit there. It, that There's no problem with it. It just breaks down. While that's all happening, we need to get an equilibrium which will only be at 14 hours of continuous, continuous and stable operation of this reactor as according to the notes of the, uh, the patch notes of the game. So what we're waiting for now is to generate as what we want. We are overproducing by about 2,500 kilowatts which is being dumped into our resistors instead of being output to the grid as they only want 5855. So at the same time, our facility is currently using power from its internal turbine upstairs and burning fuel because of it. So let's turn that on to automatic and it will shut down above our heads nice and easy. So there it goes, just there, drops down to absolute zero. We're not burning off any more fuel right now. We can top that off in the next episode when we do walk around to get some hidden objectives just along the lines here. So that should be A-OK -okay to get done and we'll get that absolute perfect stability, hopefully in episode two. So make sure you stick around for that one. Comment any of your thoughts in the comment section below, obviously, because I do reply to any and all comments, no matter how silly or negative or whatever it may be, I take it all as constructive criticism. So make sure you do that. Like the video while you're there, maybe share it with your friends. Stay sharp till next time. As always, thanks for watching. See ya.